Correlational designs take descriptive research one step further. Correlational designs seek to understand how variables are related to one another. This relationship between variables is often expressed as a correlation coefficient. A correlation coefficient is a number that ranges between positive one and negative one. The number itself represents the strength of the relationship between two variables. So as an example, a correlation coefficient of 0 0.8 would be a strong relationship, whereas a correlation coefficient of 0 0.2 would be much weaker. The positive or negative of the correlation coefficient tells us the direction of the relationship. If it's positive, it means that as the values of one variable increases or decreases, then the second variable also increases or decreases in the same manner. If the correlation coefficient is a negative number, then as the value of one variable increases, the other decreases, and vice versa. This is best illustrated with some examples. This figure shows a type of graph called a scatter plot. Each data point on the graph represents two variables for a single person. On the horizontal axis, called the x-axis, we have height. And on the vertical axis, also called the y-axis, we have shoe size. By looking at the data points on this figure, we can see as people's height increases, so does their shoe size. Thus, the data points on this scatter plot show a positive relationship. Because the values increase together in the same direction with a correlation coefficient of 0 0.93, which is a strong positive correlation since it's quite close to positive one. This is not surprising since taller people tend to have larger feet than smaller people. This scatter plot is similar to the last one as the vertical y axis shows shoe size. However, notice that the horizontal x axis is now different. The x axis now shows a person's final grade in a course. The data points are scattered all over the place, which tells us, not surprisingly, that there is no relationship between shoe size and final exam score. The correlation coefficient is pretty close to zero. Finally, this last scatter plot shows final grades on the x axis and hours per day of watching Netflix on the y axis. The data shows a clear negative relationship. So, the more time spent watching Netflix, the lower the final grade in the course. This correlation coefficient is pretty close to negative one. As demonstrated, correlational designs can tell us a lot about the relationships between two variables, and so are very useful and frequently used in psychology. Let's focus in now on another example to help us see why psychologists might choose to address their research questions with a correlational design. Imagine you are interested in whether the amount of screen time increases short-sightedness in children. Do you think as a researcher, you would be able to take away all laptops and televisions from some children while imposing certain durations of screen time on others? Most definitely not. It's neither practical nor ethical to carry out this type of study. However, what you could do is look at whether a child is short-sighted or not, as well as the average amount of time they spend looking at a screen. So, in this way, you would be looking at the relationship between screen time and short-sightedness without depriving or enforcing technology on children. For these reasons, Correlational designs are often necessary and as a result are frequently used. Of course, it is also for these reasons that correlational designs come with limitations. The biggest limitation of correlational designs is that they cannot determine causality. One reason for this is the directionality problem, meaning it's not possible to tell the direction of causation. For instance, Let's say there is a strong correlation between sitting close to the television and poor vision. You might conclude that sitting close to the screen 
causes poor vision. But it's also possible that poor vision leads to people wanting to sit closer to the television so they can see. With a correlational design, we are not able to tell whether one variable causes the other, only that the variables are linked. Another reason why we can't determine causality from correlation is the third variable problem, which presents the possibility that the cause could be something else entirely. What if actually sitting too close to the television and poor vision are both being caused by a third variable that wasn't measured, or in some cases, not even realized? For our current example, a third variable could be the amount of time spent indoors. It might be that spending time inside leads to both people spending more time watching television as well as poor vision. In fact, a recent study in China showed that the time spent indoors was a predictor of needing glasses in children, not screen time. So, directionality and third variables must be taken into consideration when interpreting correlations between variables. While correlational designs can illuminate strong relationships between variables, they must always be interpreted with caution. As we discussed, causation can never be inferred from correlation. To determine causation, experimental research design is required. 